Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mesa Troll Tips and Tricks. If this is your first time here, my name is Phil, and I teach people how to set up and run a Mazak CNC lathe while programming it with Mesa Troll. In this next video, I'm going to show you how to use the material shape function to make programming easier on pre-machined parts. Alright, let's get started. All right, here's the stock that I'm gonna be starting with. It's three and a quarter diameter, but it has a turned feature on it, one and a half inches in diameter by three inches long. And what I wanna do is turn this diameter down to 1.4 inches and turn it back another quarter inch. So what we need to do is describe this stock shape to the machine otherwise it's going to be cutting a whole bunch of air uh, with and we don't need to be doing that so in this video i'm going to show you how to set the machine up so it doesn't cut a whole bunch of air for parts that are already machined like this so this is the stock diameter that we're going to be starting with is three and a quarter and it's turned back already three inches and inch and a half diameter. So what we need to do is create a new program, push the left button, go to program, program file, and we're going to select a work number that's not listed up here. I'm going to select work number 40. Go back to program, type work number 40, input. If it's a new program, push the program button. Mazatrol or EIA, we're going with Mazatrol. So the top line is going to be the same as what we normally do. Workpiece material is aluminum. Max outside diameter, again, we're starting with uh, 3.25 stock. Inner diameter does not have a hole in it. Uh, the workpiece length, I'm going to say, is 5 inches long. The max spindle RPM limit is 2,000 RPM. Finish allowance on X is going to be 10 thousandths. And finish allowance on Z, I'm going to make it 3 thousandths because I'm going to use a 35 degree diamond to rough and finish this part. So I'm going to leave only 3 thousandths on the face. Stock removal of work face is going to be zero. I'm not going to face the part off. So, in order to describe the workpiece shape, which is right here, it must be process number one. If the workpiece shape is down process two, three, or four, so forth, it will not work. In workpiece shape must be process number one for this to take effect. So you push workpiece shape, workpiece outer diameter 0.1 in X. So we're going to give it this point right here. X is 1.5. Workpiece outer diameter 0.1 in Z. And we're going to give it this point here in Z, which is 3.0. And for this workpiece shape, we only need to give it one coordinate right here. It's going to put this horizontal line in here and the vertical line up to the stock diameter. So now if we push the down arrow, uh, and we're not gonna d describe a hole. We can do the same thing in a bore but in this example, I'm just showing you how to do stuff on the OD. So now we have the stock described. Now we can push the right button, go figure check, and here's the stock. So that looks like the part, you know, with the center line here. So now, we can program it normally, turn on the coolant, which is normally process one, but now it's process two. 
And now we're going to do a bar out. Cutting point on X is going to be 3.25. Cutting point on Z is 0, which is the face of the part. And we're going to slow the feeds and speeds down a little bit. And we're going to use tool 2, offset 1, tool 2, offset 1. So now I want to turn a diameter. Give me a 20 thousandths chamfer at the front of it. 1.4. And I'm going to go back 3.25. And I'm going to put a chamfer at the top of the part. All right, so now we have it described. I'm turning a diameter 1.4 inches in diameter, and I'm going back three and a quarter. Store, scale, I'm going to blow this up. So right here, it has less stock than it does here. So now when we run the graphics on the tool path, it's going to come in here and it's going to wrap it all the way across here and it's going to leave the clearance plane that it normally was on the front. It's gonna leave clearance on the face of the stock. Machine it out and then it's going to machine the OD of it probably in two passes because the way I have the parameters set up for the clearance. But let's let's go ahead and run the tool path. So it actually took three passes because my depth of cut is so s small at 50,000 step the cut. So it's gonna take uh, basically two air passes because of the clearance plane, and then it's gonna cut the stock. So this is the workpiece shape for what I have in the machine already. But what we can do is describe workpiece shapes with the taper on the front, for example, or a diameter, a taper, and then the face. But we would give it a first point here and a second point here. Or if it just has like a chamfer on the front of it, we would give it the first point on the very front on Z0. And then the second point would be the X stock diameter. That would be this one here, where I gave it a point here and a point here. So this is the only area where it's gonna wrap it and then it's gonna feed in the rest of the stock. So if we want it to look like this one, we would simply change this and basically give it uh, an angle.
But anyway, our stock looks like this, so let's go back to this example. All right, I cleared the fields by putting zero and zero, and then it erased both of the fields. So now we're back to what we started with. So now what we need to do is set the work shift and then run the part. Let's do that now. That's close enough for this part. Program, program file. Z offset teach, zero input. Minus five on the chuck Z to bring it out of the way. Auto, work number 40. Now we're at zero. And then here's our tool over here on the front of the part. And in this example, I'm going to turn off the coolant because I don't want to get wet. I'm going to run it with the door open. So I'm going to shut off the coolant. And here we go. And there's our finished workpiece. So that's how to machine the part using the workpiece shape menu. If you like what you see, go ahead and push that subscribe button and click the bell so you won't miss any future videos we have coming out. If you guys find this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel and gets YouTube to share this video with more people. Also, if you guys have suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching.